This is Sean Derrick. Welcome to the Hard Part Show. Monday motivation for the anti-morning person. If you are not a morning person, I am not a morning person. Trust me, this is the Sean, show for you. Talk to me. That uh, phone? Oh, shit. Let's do it again. Welcome to the Hard Part Show, guys. <laughs> I got a question the other day. The question was, when will I find someone right for me? Today on the Hard Part Show, we're talking about dating. We should actually call this episode Waiting. You might wanna, you might wanna turn this up a little bit. Now who out there got a date nap? You got the OK Cupid, you got the Tinder, you got the Bumblebee thing. We a swiping generation. And before we get into dating, let me just say that relationships are tough. First of all, you got people who are single who, who can't wait to get in one. Then you got those who are in who can't wait to get out. Then you got those who ain't got nobody, but they don't want you to have anybody either. <laughs> That's why when you get divorced, haters be like, Welcome back. But the thing you gotta ask yourself is, why? And I don't mean ask yourself why you want a significant other, but I want you to ask a more pressing question. And that is, why am I not enough? Okay, look, this ain't a one size fits all approach. Obviously we all are in different areas of our lives, but I might've hit a chord with some of y'all. I'll go first, I'll be honest. I was a sold out serial monogamous. I went from relationship to relationship. I break up with somebody, I don't even let the door close all the way before I be like, come on in, it's somebody else. And you see, that's, that was a problem. And that's when I had to learn that there's a difference between being single and available. Okay, imagine you walk into a restaurant and you see an open table, single. You ask the waitress, can you sit down? She says, sure, you can have a seat, but I haven't got a chance to wipe it down yet. So you're sitting down at your own risk because the table's not yet available. <laughs> Some of y'all new relationships and you mad at the person for still talking to their ex. Don't, don't be mad. You should have waited for them to clean all that up first. Now you got crumbs and shit all over your elbows. <laughs> Cause they ain't available. Let me tell you right now, there are people in relationships that ain't supposed to be. Hell, some people need to be single. No, some people need to be single. I know a young lady right now who wishes she ain't going on that second date. And, and, she pay, and she paid for the first one. Now she's stuck with his ass. Now she's stuck. This is the biggest lesson about dating I've ever learned. You gotta watch your appetite. Some of y'all walking around like, oh. <laughs> you gotta watch your appetite. Because when you're hungry, everything tastes like steak. <laughs> okay, we wanted to rewind that. This was too good to say once. <laughs> You gotta watch your appetite, because when you're hungry, everything tastes like steak. And that's why sometimes you need other people around to help you out. See, you thought he was funny, we thought he was obnoxious. You thought he was frisky, we thought he was freaky. And you thought he was a baller and we saw the tags. So you know they got the same shirt of Marshall's. Because when you're hungry, everything tastes like steak. Sean. Yeah. Not everyone eats steak. And sometimes you don't even know if it's good or bad for you till it settles in your stomach. I remember there was one night we were just getting back from the club. Hungry as a hostage. Only thing open was White Castle. And I'm trying to tell you, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'm not going to say too much, but I will say this. There is a pair of underwear out there with no home. And all y'all seeking to be in one, like I said before, relationships are tough. You gotta learn how to treat the person. You gotta teach the person how to treat you. And then there's this whole thing about expectations. I'll admit it, guys be double standard as hell. See, if y'all dating, he wants you to be a saint, but then he mad at you when you don't know how to do all that extra sexual stuff. Hey baby, why, why don't you know how to do that? Because you wanted Sister Mary Clarence, that's why. But say they do do extra stuff. Then you be like, Whew, that, was, that was really good, babe. Where, where, where you learn that from? <laughs> So why are you not enough? Well, what I found out about me is that I was dating for validation. I needed somebody to tell me how talented and smart I was. I needed somebody to tell me how sexy and strong I was. See, so I wasn't looking for a girlfriend. I was looking for a girl fan because I really wasn't a fan of my own. And that's why anybody I dated was never ever enough. And I've disrupted many a life trying to figure me out. When you feel like you're enough, you'll immediately know your worth and you won't shop on an empty stomach. You won't end up with some fool because you're already be fooled. And at the end of it all, you'll remember why you got into this dating thing in the first place. You remember how dope you are. You remember what you bring to the table. Because at the end of the day, you're the one worth waiting for. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching episode two of The Hard Part. Here's the easy part. Share this video with someone you believe is worth the wait.